Since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in March 2020, economic upheavals, geopolitical tensions, and the security of goods and services have all been in a tremendous uproar. Extensive studies on the global economic impact of COVID-19 pointed out several factors we must take into consideration. Firstly, the global unemployment rate skyrocketed to 6.57%, with thousands of persons losing their jobs as a direct result of the closure of businesses due to the pandemic. Further, the global gross domestic product GDP fell by more than 3.4% in 2020, with some countries facing a 10% decline in GDP, while there was an 11.6% decline in the trade of goods. This economic dampening placed significant strain on individuals, families, and their livelihoods. For persons living with disabilities, life was much, much more challenging. Studies revealed that these persons were disenfranchised from many basic services, as things became quite scarce and hard to access during the pandemic. Work published in the Archives of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation pointed out that some of the restrictions implemented when COVID-19 was still rampant have had a long-term effect on persons with disabilities. Already being stacked against the odds, the pause on educational opportunities during the pandemic hit the disabled community with blunt force as hundreds of thousands of people were affected. Hinterland communities have also faced extreme turbulence in accessing goods and services because of the disruption in supply chains. The July 15 edition of the Guyana Chronicle pointed out that Tashaus, the leaders of rural villages, had to engage domestic airline operators to mitigate the rising costs of airfares. The airfare rises almost automatically resulted in the bizarre spiking of goods, with bread reaching $1,000 per loaf. Meanwhile, the fishing industry faced several challenges leading up to the pandemic, with these issues being further exacerbated post-pandemic. A breakthrough study published in the journal Nature Communications revealed that global fish catches are falling three times faster than official United Nations figures suggested. This has caused significant strain on the local fishing industry, as fishermen whose daily living are dependent on the industry complain about the issues. In the midst of what appears to be extreme crisis, in steps the war between Russia and Ukraine. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic was exacerbated by the Russia-Ukraine war, which resulted in major disruptions in the global supply chain. With Russia being one of the world's largest producers of oil, ranking only behind Saudi Arabia and the United States, the supply of oil-related products nosedived. The war between the two countries put significant strains on the global supply, especially considering that Russia provides nearly a sixth of the global oil and gas supply. One of the world's most notable strategy and operation services firm, Accenture, pointed out in its analysis that the transportation sector makes up about 94% of the sector's energy demand. With this imbalance in demand and supply, the prices for fuel spiraled, reaching more than US $11 per gallon, a 266% increase from the global average. The war also put immense pressure on the global food supply. This is because Russia and Ukraine together provide more than a quarter of the world's wheat and feed more than a billion people in the form of bread and packaged foods, according to the New York Times. Once again, the sharp dip in supply without any movement in demand resulted in the soaring of prices for wheat, mirroring what took place in 2007 and 2008 during the last global food crisis. With so many inflictions happening across the globe and still directly affecting us here in Guyana, the popular question being asked is what did government do and how did it help? In this feature, we will analyze the government's interventions in the various sectors as we highlight how the PPPC administration has supplemented household income and supported Guyanese in these difficult times. 50-year-old housewife Denise July lived through the pandemic and grappled with its life-changing effects and told her story. Changing was hard at first. Um, you had to learn to adapt um, because we didn't, ex we didn't expect it. July opined that out of all her daily duties, which include cleaning, sweeping, and watering her plants, preparing food for her family started to become a serious challenge. First thing of all, I was getting food stuff. And um, because normally we would go to Georgetown to get the food stuff. And then when the pandemic broke out, there was, um, you're scared to travel. 
because you're afraid of COVID. Mm -hmm. And then um, the price of food costs mm -hmm. went up very, very high. Um, even though at that time, I don't think it was the right thing for um, the shop uh, persons to do. But everybody started to hold back on this stuff because they was keeping it for their own friends and family. So things was very, very difficult. This was not all. He worked at the airport, at the airport taxi, and then after a while you know that the, um, the airport was closed. So definitely we had to return. What we did, we returned back to the farm. And it's six weeks before you get any produce, especially uh, cash crop. You have to wait six weeks. In that space of time, what do you do? Added to this, the Tamiri resident pointed out that the challenges the children in her home faced because of limited access to education caused her to dole out even more to balance things off. The hardest part for us was our children being away from school, um, they study, and they, it's a, had to be a while I had to take money out of what I have to buy a computer because we didn't have a computer, to buy a computer to, so that they were able to do their studies. And that was the hardest part for me because I felt sad and worried. At that point, I was studying well, what is going to become of their future. Now, the stories told in the quiet community of Tamiri are no different from those told in other parts of the country. Here's what we mean. Up the east coast of the Demerara River in the community of Enmore, grandmother Desri Narayan spoke about the hardships she faced during the COVID-19 pandemic and onward due to the external factors previously listed. These challenges came whilst having to find remedies in dealing with her young granddaughter who is living with a serious disability. I had COVID, I had to lock away for 14 days and baby can't see me and they had a hard time with her. It was hard to get her a medication home and get her stuff to eat, formula, her snack plus her wipes and pampers and so that was the hardest. Now the pandemic was no easier for minibus drivers as they also faced the brunt of the COVID-19 pandemic. We came to the 4 to 4 minibus park to hear their thoughts and ideas of what has happened and transpired from 2020 to now. We found Coven John resident Dude North Harry Narain. Here's what he had to say. Tell me what was the hardest part for you as a bus driver um, dealing during the pandemic and even after with the war in Ukraine and all of that stuff? The hardest part when you're not getting the work, right? And not getting the money to maintain the bus. Because when your tire go, the tire start to get dearer and dearer. 6,000 for a second hand tire, right? You had to buy a tire for keep the bus going. You got to buy the aisle keep the engine going, you got to buy the maintenance, everything when the parts can't block the parts, everything goes higher and higher, price gone higher and higher. The gas price go higher and higher, you have to work for get all these things, right? And you're not getting the job, the work, I mean the passenger up on the road. So it was very hard for me. In spite of all of this, however, people have managed to come out on the other side, receiving direct assistance from the incumbent administration. At the end of 2020, President Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali announced a one-off $25,000 cash grant for every single household in the country. In 2021, the Because We Care cash grant for students was reinstituted, which focused on the revitalization of the education system and providing opportunities for children to go to school. This, July noted, aided in the heavy burden being lifted off of the back of her family. I felt very, very grateful because um we have a government now that is looking out for the people, um, the welfare of the people. When the government initiated that, that uh, cash grant, it has been a great, great help. I've spoken to, to um, parents, and that was the only way the children could have returned back to school because of the cash grants. And then the 25,000, a lot of people, all they had at that time was that money to push and then the government gave out um, ampers. Every day I, I am seeing that this government is looking out for people and their welfare. Since assuming office, the government has reduced excise tax on gasoline and diesel from 50% to 0% as at March 24, 2022. When the gas drop, I feel happy. I tell you, I feel happy, real happy. 
that we could carry them a little more money now in repacket instead of buying gas. Moreover, to alleviate the strain being placed on children living with disabilities, government has distributed more than $500 million to assist with their livelihoods. I was real surprised in to not me alone, everybody was happy about it. The whole country, yeah? I am not grateful for me alone, everybody. Especially the, the needy um, kids, the special need kids. They are special need kids and they need extra special care, right? Yes, they need care, they live, need the love and always protection. So the little assistance with the 100,000 cash, right? They even come, I must say, extra special gift for my granddaughter. I was so happy and contentful. I didn't expect even that much, but I'm so grateful for it. So grateful, thankful, and it's so blessed that Amaya get her own for months and it didn't even spend as yet. Just a, a little come out. Yeah, I kept it there because in case of an emergency, illness or say Bapa disease coming back again and everything, I was afraid of the disease or any other airborne disease or anything else here. The support given by the PBPC administration to the groups who have really been grappling with the effects of COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war have proven to be nothing short of effective and timely. For DPI, I am Shukwan Gil.